Two weeks ago, we did a poll about which element you want us to discuss. And you chose radon. Now, radon is one of the most intriguing elements of the periodic table. Radon is a noble gas with the chemical symbol Rn and atomic number 86. Despite its simplicity in appearance, being colorless, odorless and tasteless, it is anything but ordinary. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic system and also do experiments. And if you like this video and want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you want to influence the elements we will be discussing next week, make sure to fill in the poll. So what we got here does not really look like a gas. It looked more like rocks in a tube. And that is true. Radon is a gas that has a half-life of 3.8 days and therefore engineered labs is not able to put it into a cube properly. Then what are these rocks inside of the cube and what does it have to do with radon? Well, these are granite minerals that over time will decay into traces of radon. Now there's more to it. Radon is also radioactive. And since I got a Geiger counter, it seems like fun to basically do some experiments and see if that radioactivity actually came through the acrylic cube. Now in order to do this experiment properly, we first wanted to know what the baseline radiation is in this room that we're filming in. Now that would be between 0.05 and 0.11 microsievert. Now to check whether the cube contained radon, I tried to see if there was a spike in radiation but there was no noticeable effect. Now likely this could be because the acryl itself uh, blocks most of the radiation. Now the next thing I wanted to check was whether the granite samples from my mineral collection were showing an increase of radiation. There seemed to be some, but not really significant. So it was time to move to the kitchen and see if the granite counter that I had formed a health risk for me and my family. Now, of course the counter didn't really form a health risk for me and my family. But there was the first real result. It turned out that when I held the Geiger counter above the counter, I find this a really funny sentence, there was an increase of about 5 to 10 microsievert more radiation. Now, this is quite an increase, but far from dangerous. So in that sense, no problems there. Now radon tends to pile up in houses, so it's always a good idea, specifically if you have a counter like we do, to freshen the air once in a while and make sure to let the radon not pile up in the house in general. Again, it doesn't really form a hazard, but it's good practice to keep the house clean. So here's a little bonus for you guys. In earlier episode, we have discussed other elements that emitted radiation. Let's have a look at what their effect on the Geiger counter was. So first of all, here we have the plutonium sample. Now it showed some emission, but definitely not a huge spike. And when we look at the thorium cube, we can see that it is emitting quite some more radiation along the lines of 15 microsieverts on top of normal radiation. Now these are some great examples of the cubes from engineered labs. And if you like them and you want to have them yourself, go to the link in the description. If you use the promo code, you'll get a 10% discount and you will also be helping out our channel. Now the story of radon begins at the turn of the century with several pivotal experiments. In 1899, Ernest Rutherford and Robert B. Owens observed a radioactive gas being emitted from thorium compounds. Rutherford described this phenomenon as emanation, although he wasn't really sure what the gas was. So around the same time, Marie and Pierre Curie discovered that radium also emitted a similar gas. These observations spurred the curiosity of Friedrich Ernst Dorn, a German physicist. In 1900, Dorn conducted experiments with radium salts and noted that they released a radioactive gas, which he called radium emanation. Now, to confirm its gaseous nature, Dorn conducted containment experiments trapping the emanation in sealed glass tubes. Now, by observing the gas properties, he deduced that it was a unique radioactive substance and not just a chemical reaction or contamination. Now, in 1908, Scottish chemist Sir William Ramsey and English chemist Robert Whitlock Gray isolated radon as a pure gas. They used the decay products of radium to accumulate radon in a container and measured its density. Their results indicated that radon was the heaviest gas known at the time. Ramsey and Whitlock Gray's work helped establish radon as a new element and led to further exploration of its properties. 
Now the name radon originates from its association with radium, the element from which it was observed as decay product. Early on, scientists referred to the gas as radium emanation because it was released during radioactive decay of radium. Now in 1918, the term radon began to gain traction to describe this gas specifically. It was derived from combining radium with the on suffix, which is commonly used for noble gases, aligning it with elements like neon, argon and krypton. Now before radon was universally adopted, the gas was also briefly called niton, from the Latin word nitens, meaning shining a nod to its phosphorescent properties when it solidifies. However, in 1923, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry officially standardized the name as radon to eliminate confusion and to reflect its close connection to radium in the decay chain. Now, radon is a noble gas, and to do a quick recap on what a noble gas is, a noble gas is a element that has a full electron shell and therefore doesn't like to react with other elements because it's let's call it satisfied. Now, if you want to know more about that, watch some of the previous episodes. Now radon has chemical symbol Rn and an atomic number of 86, which means that it has 86 protons. It is colorless, odorless and tasteless, making it undetectable without specialized instruments. Radon is a pretty dense gas and with a density of about 9.73 kilograms per cubic meter, it is around nine times heavier than air. It transitions from a gas to a liquid at minus 61.8 degrees Celsius and solidifies at minus 71 degrees Celsius. Now when solidified, it emits a yellow phosphorescence, a striking reminder of its radioactive nature. Now chemically, radon is inert under normal condition as it belongs to the noble gases group. However, it can form compounds under specific circumstances. For example, in 1962, radon fluoride was synthesized, demonstrating that radon is not entirely unreactive. Now, radon's presence is directly linked to natural decay of uranium and thorium, elements that are commonly found in granite. Granite is an igneous rock and its composition often includes trace amounts of uranium. As uranium decays, it produces radium, which further decays into radon gas, also known as thoron or radon-220. Now, what makes granite a significant source of radon is its porosity. The microscopic pores in granite allow radon gas to seep out and migrate through soil and rock layers. If this gas reaches the surface, it can accumulate in the air, especially in enclosed spaces like basements. Radon emissions from granite have become the subject of study in geology and public health. For instance, in regions with high granite concentrations, such as parts of Scandinavia and Germany, New England in the United States, and Cornwall in the UK often have high levels of radon in homes and buildings. Studies have also measured radon emissions from granite countertops. Well, we've just proved that as well. Although these are typically minor compared to emissions from soil beneath buildings. Now to study radon emissions from granite, researchers often used sealed chambers to measure the rate of gas release. They also analyzed the uranium and thorium content of granite samples to estimate potential radon production. These studies helped scientists to understand geological factors that influence radon levels and assist in predicting high-risk areas. Now, to study radon, scientists have relied on the production from radium decay. Early experiments involved placing radium salts in sealed containers to trap the radon gas released during its radioactive decay. For instance, Ramsey and Whitlock Gray's isolation of radon required precise collection and handling techniques, as radon is both radioactive and gaseous. Modern experiments often involved measuring radon levels in controlled environments, such as soil chambers or granite samples. Detection instruments like scintillation counters and Geiger-Muller tubes are used to measure radon concentration and radiation levels. Radon has a few notable applications over time. In the early 20th centuries, it was used as a medicine, specifically radiotherapy. Radon seeds, tiny glass tubes containing radon gas, were implanted near tumors to deliver localized radiation. However, due to its risk associating with handling radioactive materials, radon has largely been replaced by safer alternatives in medical treatments. 
Today, Radon's primary significance lies in public health and environmental monitoring. Its role as a health hazard led to the development of testing kits and mitigation strategies to reduce exposure to homes and workplaces. Now, Radon poses a significant health risk, primarily as a leading cause of lung cancer among non-smokers. It seeps into buildings through cracks and foundations, gaps around pipes or other openings, accumulating in enclosed spaces. Prolonged exposure to high radon levels can damage lung tissue, increasing the risk of cancer. Now, it is important to know that breathing in radon or thorn itself has no direct effect on health. However, radon and thorn naturally decay into other radioactive substances. These decay products, known as daughters, are no longer gaseous and therefore easily attached to microscopic dust particles floating in the air. After inhalation, these dust particles, along with radon and thoron daughters, can remain in the lungs. As radioactive substances continue to decay in the lungs, they emit radiation and that can damage the lung cells. This increases the risk of developing lung cancer. Fortunately, radon is detectable with relatively simple tools. Home testing kits are widely available and measure radon levels over several days. If high levels are detected, mitigation strategies such as improved ventilation and sealing off the cracks can effectively reduce radon concentration. Radon is a remarkable element with a rich history, unique properties and significant implications for public health and geology. From its discovery in the early 20th century to its modern day role as a public health concern, the radon reminds us of the intricate connection between science, nature and safety. And that concludes the episode. Now, if you think I missed something, leave it in the comments. And if you like this video and want to see more, make sure to subscribe.